Hi, it's Mrs. Dries from the Harrison Township Public Library. Welcome to our story about brilliant birds. This is an ebook from the Extreme Animals series, and it can be found on the Michigan Electronic Library, otherwise known as MEL, in the K through 8 ebooks collection. You can link to MEL through the Harrison Township Public Library's children's page, so feel free to explore that. Now, in this book, we are going to learn about, obviously, brilliant birds. You can see all kinds of cool birds everywhere you look, whether they're in your backyard, in your neighborhood, at the lake, or if you go on vacations with your family, you might even see some exotic birds that you've never seen before in your life. So, we're going to take a look at the birds in this book and see what makes them so brilliant. We're going to start out here on the contents page. The contents page is something you'll find in a lot of nonfiction or informational books like we'll be reading today. It will let us know what page each little chunk or chapter begins on. So you can see here we're going to learn about a lot of things today. We have extreme birds, regal eagles, helicopter hummingbirds, outsized ostriches, tough penguins, revolting vultures, bird builders and artists, fearless flamingos, soaring albatrosses, clever crows, tongue-twisting woodpeckers, noisy cockapos, record breakers. And then at the bottom, we have some more things that you'll find in nonfiction informational text. We have a glossary, which is kind of like a mini built-in dictionary to help us learn words that we might not know. We can find out more on page 31 here, and we have an index, which will give us even more specific places to find information in this book. What's nice about a book that has a table of contents like this is that if you didn't want to start at the beginning and read through the book like we're doing now, you could just look down here and let's say you really wanted to read about Fearless Flamingos, you could flip right to page 18 and it would take you right there. Extreme birds. Do you think you know everything about birds? Think again. All birds have wings and feathers, but the differences between birds can make them extreme. Some birds have bizarre bodies. Some behave in weird ways. These features help them to find mates for food or to avoid getting eaten themselves. Notice we have some words here in bold. Remember I told you about our little glossary that's in the back of the book? We'll take a look at that when we're done. And we, if we wanted to find out more about what these words mean, we could find it there. Inside of our little text box down here, it says, Extreme colors help some male birds to attract female birds. And do you know who that bird is down there? That is a peacock. If you've ever seen peacocks, and they put up their feathers. They're beautiful and colorful. Did you know bee eaters can remove a bee's stinger before eating the bee? Wow, look at that guy. He's having some lunch there. Regal Eagle. Champion human weightlifters can lift one and a half times their body weight. This is nothing compared to eagle power. Some eagles can carry monkeys or deer four times their weight. And we have a did you know box at the bottom here. Did you know eagles attack and eat anything they can carry, including snakes, which is what we see in this picture. And here we have a close-up kind of a picture of an eagle. We can see that it's pointing to huge eyes to spot prey and sharp talons. Again, our bold words here. We could find out more about what those mean in the back of the book if we would like to. We can probably guess what it means here. Sharp talons, it's pointing to their what? Yeah, it's pointing to their claws. So we can probably infer that talons is another word for claws. And if their huge eyes spot prey, prey 
is probably what they eat, right? Their eyes help them spot things to eat. Now we have helicopter hummingbirds. How long would it take you to flap your arms 90 times? Some hummingbirds can flap their wings 90 times in one second. This helps them to hover in front of flowers. Did you know hummingbirds need lots of energy? They eat every 10 minutes and visit up to 1,500 flowers every day. And here we have our arrow is pointing to long beak for reaching nectar. You see how long their beak is? It's kind of like a little straw, isn't it? And they can get way up inside of these flowers so they can eat. You get to see a picture of a hummingbird with some more information. Bee hummingbirds are just over two inches long. That is smaller than many rainforest butterflies. And it says here, this is the actual size. So that's how small that little bird is. Tiny little guy. Mmm, now we're going to get into a big one. Outsized ostriches. Ostriches are the world's biggest birds. They are too heavy to fly, but they don't need to. They can run at more than 40 miles per hour. That is fast enough to escape most predators. Each stride can be as long as two cars. And you see our arrow here is pointing to big muscles for running. Very strong legs. And down here, we have world's largest eggs. Those are the ostrich eggs. Now we'll read about tough penguins. Emperor penguins survive the world's worst weather in the Antarctic. Icy blizzards make it feel three times colder than a freezer. Each male spends the winter looking after an egg. If a penguin drops its egg, the chick inside will freeze to death in two minutes. So they have to be very careful and they have to be very good parents, don't they? In our text box with the arrow here, it says male emperor penguins huddle together to keep warm in the freezing cold. Let me scroll down here. Can you, you can see them a little better around the outside edges here, but they're Lots and lots of them in the middle here keeping warm. So that's how they stay warm. They cuddle together. Did you know penguins have spiky tongues? This helps the birds grip slippery fish. And here we'll learn about revolting vultures. When predators, like lions, kill an animal, they leave the most disgusting parts behind. Vultures find this rotting meat and gobble it up. They eat so much that it becomes difficult for them to fly. Did you know Egyptian vultures use rocks to break open ostrich eggs? You can see this one here has a rock in their mouth and they're going to try to break open this egg. Mmm, kind of a gross picture here. If you are not into grossness, you may want to close your eyes on this one. Vultures stick their heads deep inside dead animals. Being bald means they get less blood and guts stuck to their heads. Well, that's how these guys live. All I gotta say is, ew. I think I'm glad I'm not a vulture. Here we have bird builders and artists. Weaver birds build the world's largest nests. The nests are like large apartment buildings with room for hundreds of birds. Living together protects the birds from predators. Look at this nest. Let's go down a little bit here. This whole thing in the tree is a nest. Have you ever seen a nest that big? Pretty impressive, isn't it? Male bowerbirds are artists. 
They make beautiful displays with flowers, leaves, and other pretty things. They want to impress female bowerbirds. So this one here has collected some things that it's going to make a, in a little art project with. We've got some feathers, a plastic spoon, a bottle cap. This one seems to be drawn to a particular color, doesn't he? This one seems to like the color blue. It looks like he's collected a lot of blue things. Now we're going to read about fearless flamingos. This lake is hot, stinky, and poisonous. The water would kill most animals, but flamingos can feed safely here. They have special bills that filter food from the water. A flock of flamingos can contain up to one million birds. It's a big flock of birds. Look at them all on this lake here. Here's a close-up. Did you know the bend in a flamingo's leg is actually its ankle? You can see how high up it is here where it bends. We would think that might be their knee, right? Because it's right about where we would expect a knee to be. It's actually their ankle. Definitely something I didn't know before I read this book. Soaring albatrosses. Albatrosses hunt, eat, and sleep at sea. Some don't set foot on land for 10 years at a time. And this box says an albatross can fly for days without flapping its huge wings. It uses energy from the wind to stay in the air. That is a pretty incredible bird, isn't it? Did you know Scientists have tagged albatrosses to find out how far they fly. One albatross flew around the world in 46 days. That is crazy impressive. Clever crows. You guys, we have a book at the library about clever crows. If you ever want to check it out and find out more information about these guys, they, they are pretty fascinating too. Crows are very clever. They think like humans. They are the only birds that can invent new tools. They make hooks from sticks and leaves. They use their tools to scoop insects from small holes. You can see one using a stick for that purpose right in this picture here. Did you know some crows have figured out a way to crack walnuts? They wait next to a busy road. When the traffic stops, they hop out and put the walnuts on the road. Cars drive over the nuts and break them open. Pretty smart. These guys are pretty smart. Here we have some tongue-twisting woodpeckers. Imagine that your tongue reached your knees. A woodpecker's tongue is two-thirds the length of its body. It uses its tongue to grab food from holes in trees. The tip of its tongue can sense vibrations made by moving insects. Did you know the woodpecker's tongue is like a tape measure? When the tongue is not being used, it coils around the woodpecker's skull inside its head. Hmm. I guess they've got to keep that big long tongue somewhere, right? Here we have noisy cacapos. Cacapos are the fattest parrots in the world. Males make a booming sound to attract females. The noise can be heard up to three miles away. I had never heard of a cacapo before I read this book. The male cacapo sucks in air until he is as big as a soccer ball. Then he releases a deep boom. He does this every night for two or three months. You probably wouldn't want one of these guys living outside in your tree, right? Here's some record breakers. Which bird do you think is the most extreme and why? Take a look at some of these record breaking birds to help you decide. What? the common swift. 
Why? Why is he a record-breaking bird? The longest flight without stopping. Wow! When swifts leave their nests for the first time, they fly non-stop for two years. They can travel 310,000 miles in one trip. That is farther away than the moon. I would say that's pretty extreme, wouldn't you? Let's find another one. What? Ruppel's vulture. And why is it being ex uh, nominated for the most extreme? It is the highest flying bird. Wow! This high flyer has been spotted at a height of 37,000 feet. That is high enough to peer in the windows of a jumbo jet. So that flies pretty high, doesn't he? Here's another nominee for the most extreme. What is it? An albatross. Why? Longest wings. Wow! The wings of the wandering albatross are over 11 feet from tip to tip. That is like 17 soccer balls in a row. Ah, there's some pretty big wings there. What is this one? An ostrich. And why? The largest bird's egg. Wow! One ostrich egg can weigh as much as 24 chicken eggs. How'd you like that for your omelet in the morning? Or scramble it up with some cheese. <laughs> what is this one? The peregrine falcon. And why is it nominated? It's the fastest flying bird. Wow! When chasing prey, peregrine falcons dive bomb as fast as 155 miles per hour. We have peregrine falcons near us nesting up in the Macomb County building. If you go online, you can actually find a webcam um, that will show you their nest. And there's webcams around um, different areas in Michigan, like the Detroit Zoo and the General Motors building, and you can watch them. You can see when they lay their eggs and the babies come out and everything. It's kind of a cool thing to watch. There's some amazing birds. What is this one? The kakapo. And why is it nominated? It's the longest living bird. Wow! No bird has had more birthdays than a kakapo. These parrots can live for more than 100 years. It's a long life for a bird. So here is our glossary. I was talking about this at the beginning of the book. This is like our little mini dictionary. And all of those bold print words that you saw in the book, you could come back here and you can find out a definition or what that word means if you weren't really sure what that word meant. So a lot of nonfiction informational books will have a glossary to help you understand it. On this page it tells you where you can find out more. So if you thought this was some pretty cool information, you want to find out more about some brilliant birds. Here are some other books that you could possibly find. Here are some websites that you could go to if you want to screenshot this page while it's up here on your phone or your computer or your tablet. You could screenshot it and try some of these websites to learn some more about some brilliant birds. And here in the back of the book is another feature that a lot of informational texts or nonfiction books have. And this tells you if you were looking for a particular type of bird or specific information about birds, such as um, if you want to find out information about their flying or their food or their nectar or their nests, it will tell you what page all of those are on. So it's a little bit more specific than our index up in the front of the book. And this is just to help you out with finding information. And this is just the back cover of the book, where we have our little blurb that you would read if you were to pick up this book. And so we have reached the end. And I thank you very much for joining me and learning about some brilliant birds with me. Don't forget to check out our YouTube channel for more stories, more books, more programs for kids. And make sure you stop by the library to see us soon. Take care. Bye for now.